Yes. Awesome. You guys can hear me now. I'm so happy about that. But let's get started. Guys, no, we're keeping track of the chat. So if you have any questions while we're doing this, please put them in the chat because we are going to have a um, Q&A at the end for Kiana. So keep those questions coming through. We'll be interactive through the whole webinar. But I'm going to do a quick introduction and then we're going to bring Kiana up. So Kiana is a huge dreamer, guys. I mean, I know a lot of people say that, but there's a lot of people that say I'm a dreamer and then they don't act on it. This girl acted on it. She drove last year all the way from California to Arizona to pursue her dream of a big wedding venue out here in Arizona. I mean, a lot of people are scared to do that, but this girl is fearless, okay? And when I say fearless, she loves her country music. She'll dance to it in the kitchen. She'll dance to it in Target, in public. There's not very many people who can do that, okay? Um, but guys, she has been holding a camera since she was two years old. You need to go look at her website. Um, and she hasn't put a camera down since. She's been a photographer for since high school, so over a decade. Um, and she has been full-time in her business for five years. There's not very many people who are doing that right now. Um, and she has been pursuing this um, offline um, portion of her business for a while now. So she has a lot of knowledge. And I know there's a ton of people out there who online can scare them. Um, but she is here to give you the tools so that you can run your business outside of online. Um, and it, guys, this isn't just for photographers, okay? This is for entrepreneurs. This is for creatives. This is whatever field you're in, you can utilize this knowledge. But I know I'm sure you're done hearing from me today. Um, and I want to bring Kiana on, guys. And she is going to just rock the stage today. So make sure you have your pen and paper out. Um, and once again, we are recording, and you can always come back live to this link and watch. Hi, Kiana. Hey. <laughs> How's good morning. it going? <laughs> it's going good. Going awesome, good. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. Yes. Hopefully, I represented you well. But I'm sure <laughs> people are ready to hear from you. Um, so go ahead and take over. Um, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Show it. You guys are amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, how's it going? Um, ah, I'm so nervous and excited to get started, but this information is just going to be so fun because this is something that we can do today to bring you so much closer to your goals. Like Shamisha like mentioned, I am the biggest dreamer, but I take action and I want to help you give you the tools, give you the motivation and the encouragement to chase after those dreams and actually make it happen. All right. So enough about me, let's just dive right in. If you're watching this, I can guarantee that you're probably in a position where you're proud of your services, you're proud of the offers that you have, you have tons of experience, um, you're working on your workflows, you're working on your systems, and you just wish more people about you, your brand and what you have to offer. Have you noticed that you kind of maybe burnt out your family and friends through like your Facebook group people, your old high school friends, they've already bought your products, they've already used your services. And you're just kind of like, you're kind of like in this circle wall that you've kind of created in your network where you just can't crush those boundaries and meet new people. Okay, so if that sounds like you and you're like, yes, I just need help extending my network, extending my brand awareness, then I have some secrets for you, all right? So let's get started. Uh, the very first thing, so let me in here, um, but extending your network. And it's not ironic that I have a picture of me standing here by the front door. Number one key tip, walk out your front door. Okay. <laughs> like you guys have to get outside. We are um, in this state right now. And, oh, I want to make a disclaimer as we get rolling. We are in a global pandemic right now. I'm not going to like you know, walk around this and pretend this doesn't exist. So all the tools and all the information that I'll be sharing today have been examples and experiences of things that have happened in the past, in the recent past, um, but also have a very, very bright future of mindset coming ahead, right? So we need to be prepared for that connection, that ge like those genuine relationships and 
those fun events that we can prepare for in the future. Um, Cause I know you may be thinking, you might be rolling your eyes as I'm going through some of these things thinking that can't apply to me. I can't host an event because people are going to be wearing masks. I can't host this because of large groups. And I get that. Okay. I want you to know that I understand that, but we need to put the legwork in now and we need to prepare ourselves and build those connections and start reaching out to those collaborations. So when we do get out and it is safe for us to celebrate and connect with people again, be in person, we are going to be way ahead of the game. Okay. So let's talk about extending your network, getting outside and talking about your business. Okay. So key tip number one, walking out your front door. I have four quick um, little examples of different ways that you can get out and meet new people. So number one, income. What is your day job right now? Now I ask this because you may be in a position where you are trying to make your dream job your full-time thing. This is all creative, just photographers. Everybody who has this dream and wants to make their passion their profession. If you are reaching for that full-time job, what are you doing? Are you stuck behind a desk? Are you in a virtual learning space or maybe like the office? Like, are you a Pam that is just like sitting in the office and you're not, um, you know, getting new faces all the time, new customers. I worked at Trader Joe's for six years and it was a pivotal moment in my career. Being a crew member taught me so much about life, about building friendships with my crew, with the people who are actually um, in the store with me. And, um, they're like my biggest supporters. They're my root system. And they were, I should, I, I almost shared some of the photos from, um, like back in the day, <laughs> but, uh, that's not necessary, but they've definitely grown with me and they've shared, uh, like they're like my practice crew and they've helped grow me to where I am. So my question to you is if you have a full-time job, are you exposing yourself to new people every day? And if you're not, and maybe on the flip side, maybe you are fortunate to be full-time and living your passion, but because of this pandemic, you need side hustle. You need to go out and make extra money. I suggest you go pick up a job at a local coffee shop, go work at a local fitness center, um, if they're open and safe and you're comfortable to do that. But you need to get out and be around people, okay? So I definitely challenge you. Side note, commercial break. I'm going to have lots of commercial breaks for you guys. Um, sometimes I think as creatives and entrepreneurs, we get kind of stuck in this thought process that these big leaps of faith have to be like jumping off a cliff. Like in order for me to go full time with my dream, I have to take this huge leap. When in reality, they're just tiny risks and calculated risks, tiny steps to get you where you gotta be, okay? So that was a lot about Trader Joe's and, and your job and your income. Next is volunteer. Are you sharing your talent to help others? You have this gift, your creative product, your creative service. Are you sharing it? This is a photo of my brother's race. He's been doing flat track, dirt bike racing forever. That's how I started with my business. Um, I used to um, photograph and video all of his evil Knievel stuff. And so that's how I got started. And uh, it's not, you know, volunteer work is not just charity work. That is important for our community. But you can also volunteer for your nephew's soccer games, for your best friend's birthday parties and different events. If you are in the event industry, share your gifts. Okay. So that's a huge one. Another one is adventure. So are you getting out? Are you hiking? Are you um, getting out and meeting new people outdoors and surrounding yourself with new energy and new people making friends? Like, I want you to kind of put that hat on that. I'm not going out to talk about my business. I'm just going out to meet new people and to have fun. So are you, are you adding that to your, um, to your calendar? I hope you are. Um, another tip I have is investing in your education. So many of us are familiar with Rising Tide Society and HoneyBook and all the amazing contacts in the community um, with them. And this here was from um, the Rising Tide uh, Leaders Retreat. And I don't know if you guys can tell, I know the images are really tiny, <laughs> but I am smack dab in the middle of every single one of these photos, okay? So, so anyway, so back to the education part, I'm putting myself in those situations to meet new people. Thankful for Rising Tide Society for bringing together our country and our nation and globally creatives. 
And I now have friends all over the world and uh, we share very similar passions and we support each other. So these are just a quick little like, you know, little fun facts on ways you can get out your door and you can meet new people. All right. So now that you're being brave and you're getting yourself outside, you're meeting new people. Let's talk about brand awareness and how you can actually talk to these people. Because I, I feel if you're anything like me, sometimes being in person can be a little awkward and you don't know how to interject your business. You don't know how to talk about your business without feeling salesy, without feeling like awkward or like you're trying to make the conversation about you, right? So let's chat about how you can talk about your business fluidly, fluidly <laughs> without derailing the conversation and making it weird. All right. Um, so, oh, I added a quote in here. Uh, <laughs> the easiest way to promote brand awareness is to do what you love every day. So I stand by this and it's not just having my camera in my hand, but it's also going out and doing those fun things because the more of a like full, happy person you are and the more you surround yourself with things that bring you joy, the right people are going to be a magnet to you. Okay. So with that in mind, you're going out, you're meeting new people. Let's talk about your business. So one of the first things you can do, and this is why I highly recommend investing in a show it website WordPress blog integration is you have to do a little bit of legwork and and get your like tips and resources and all the fun facts online. So this is I'm kind of cheating. This this isn't offline. This is an online thing you got to do. <laughs> um, but you have to add value. So when you do go out and you do start meeting these people, you can direct them to your house, which is your your website, your online home full of resources to help answer their questions, share tips and direct them to your sales offerings. Okay, so you're adding value. Um, you're solving problems. So one of the biggest thing that I've noticed is, and now I'm definitely a storyteller. So if I get off track, let me know. <laughs> um, but let's say you are um, going to the bank. I spend a lot of time at the bank as an entrepreneur, business owner, old school business owner. And and the next time someone asks you, how are you? What are you up to today? Instead of just saying, I'm fine, thanks, and just passing them off and going about your day, let them know what you're up to. Did you recently photograph an event? Did you recently DJ something? Did you recently, uh, I don't know, any, like, did you recently sell a house that you're proud of if you're real? Share those events. Because these people, believe it or not, People like everyone knows someone that needs something, right? And so it's going to spark information. So if you are answering questions and chiming in ways to help someone, it makes it way less salesy. And they are more likely to reach out to you as the expert when you have answers to their problems or you're there to help. Another thing that you can make it about them is you can have fun. Okay. So one of my favorite things one of my absolute favorite things is hosting events. So if you're thinking, oh gosh, I don't have any friends. Oh, my job keeps me virtually at home. My family, my plants and my dogs keep me at home. I, I don't get out and meet new people. If that sounds like you, you need to make your own magic. Okay, so I want to encourage you to get out and create your own events. Hashtag when it's safe. Okay, like when we can do that. Let's chat about it. My biggest advice for you is to create Instagrammable moments. You need to shift the universe and create really fun gatherings and really fun events that get people to come out in real life and make them want to share about it online organically and naturally. Okay. They're going to be so excited. So I have three events here. I host multiple events a year, and this is just a handful as, as I was like preparing for this, I'm like, Oh, this too. And this, I did that. So let's chat about the three that I really want to talk about today. Each year, I host a couple's date night for my past couples. Um, they come out. I am super in, like like, <laughs> like Shamisha and, um, said earlier, I love country music. I love dancing. And a lot of my couples do as well. That's my vibe. That's my brand. So we went out to a country bar. And I paid for like an over $600 tab for my couples to come out. We danced. They slow danced. Um, we requested some of their first, like, their first dance. So fun. And um, it was a great opportunity for them to just 
come out and let loose and have a good time. And of course I offered giveaways for them. So they were sharing, they were posting about it and it was just a fun event. Um, there's my brother there on the bottom. He bought me a shirt. He was, he's so proud. <laughs> he's so fun. Um, okay. In the middle event here is my brunch and bubbly. This is an event that I host every year for recently engaged couples. And uh, it's just a fun open house Q and A for, um, for girls to come in, they ask questions. I also co-hosted with uh, other wedding vendors. So I have a hairstylist, a wedding planner and florist there to help answer questions. So if you're an introvert and you're thinking, uh oh, this is not for me. I cannot host these events. I don't want to talk to people. I like being safe behind my computer screen and maybe showing up for some events. Guess what? You don't have to do it alone. Okay. You can and you can invite other people and uh, you can all celebrate together. In fact, here's Ma. Here's my mom here. She's pouring champagne. So as the girls and their moms, their maid of honors, um, their wedding party were coming in. Mom was, she was happy to celebrate and she's such a huge support. So that's awesome. And then I really want to talk about um, the annual Valentine's Day event that I host at the show at office here in Gilbert. So when I first made this leap of faith to move to Arizona, oh man, I was like, I need traction. I need to meet people. I need to share my gratitude and just have fun. Like I want to create traditions and really fun things to look forward to not just for my business, but for my sanity, <laughs> like for like those human connections, I really want to strengthen those relationships. So I thought about Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day is one of those holidays that most people work on Valentine's Day. You don't really take it off, but it's fun. Um, and I just wanted to show a lot of love to show it. Um, so what I did is I just reached out to Jihei um, and I just said, hey girl, I want to host lunch. Can I bring in pizzas? And she's like, free pizza? Yeah, sure, come. So that's how it started um, last or this this year. Oh, my gosh. I was a last year. We got really lucky because Natalie Frank was on her Rising Tide um, tour. And so she was going like the Tuesdays together road trip. And so the stars aligned to have her here the week of Valentine's Day. So I invited her and Huey. We got to meet Huey in person and her sweet bestie Maddie as well. Um, she's also a photographer. So it, it worked out well. And we just celebrated. So I want to kind of highlight these three specific events and how, how, like who I'm targeting with these events. Okay. So if you take a peek at my couples, um, like, you know, my, my bar night, my couples date night that I'm focusing on my past clients, they're not getting married again. Like why, like, why would I invest my time and my money into past clients where they may or may not be actually purchasing for me again? because I love them and I want to have those connections. And I kind of want other people that maybe didn't hire me as their wedding photographer, or maybe someone that is looking forward, looking for a photographer, that maybe that'll just be the push to be like, oh yeah, Kiana takes great photos, but she hosts this really fun event, right? And she just, she loves on her clients even after, like she believes in your marriage even after you're married. That's the type of legacy I want to live with. And then um, my bridal brunch, like, you know, brunch and bubbly for my girls, that is a brand awareness thing. I'm reaching out to people and I'm saying, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to offer your services and come and look cute. We're going to have fun. And then, of course, going back to show it here, that is a contact I'm making with my business. So I almost call that like the behind the scenes because show it for me. You guys are my backbone of my business. Like you're my website. You're my community behind everything that we do. And that is like a connection that I want to harvest and I want to build because running your business is really scary and like it's a lot of work and being surrounded by people that understand that and obviously the tech thing that a lot of us creatives have a hard time with. I want to be your friends. <laughs> so I do this and I don't, I don't go into this thinking I'm going to get new followers. I'm going to get shout outs. I do this because I genuinely want to. Okay. So let's roll into the next thing. Now that you're building these relationships, you're making friends, let's talk about snail mail and how the old school marketing method that brings smiles and really it just gives your clients, your past clients, something to hold. Okay, so this is so important. So we all know snail mail, right? We all can think, oh yeah, thank you cards. They're important, they're nice. Well, I wanna give you a handful of other ways that you can think of actually sending things in the mail that bring smiles. 
So every year I send holiday cards and I actually love sending Thanksgiving, like thankful, grateful, like holiday cards. So it's not, it gets a little bit more non-denominational and, um, and that's super fun. So you can consider sending thank you card or sorry, like thankful cards for Thank you for your business. Um, one thing that I do every year is I send out like a round, um, a roundup year of all, um, like a, a card or like, I, I love these like adventure cards here. I think I got, this is ordered from Shutterfly. Um, and, uh, it's just so fun because their faces are actually on here for my, my wedding clients. Um, and so each year they get like a little mini yearbook of all the fun things that happened. So you can definitely do that for your business as well. Um, and then Valentine's day cards. I am so pumped on Valentine's day guys, obviously, but what makes it fun is I use these, um, and I wish I had one to show you. I sent them out, <laughs> um, but they're little Valentine's Day cards through Social Print Studio. I can share the link with you. And uh, what's awesome about it is that you can have like one back on it that's the same, and then the front of the image, like the fronts, can all be different images. So I send those to all of my couples I've ever shot every year. Um, and that is so fun because it's a different photo that they may not have selected or they may have kind of forgotten about their wedding day. And what makes it awesome is it makes it about them. Okay. Remember, I'm not just sending a, a happy thanks or, you know, happy Valentine's day, love you forever. And a picture of my face, I'm sending an image of them. And that's what goes up on their refrigerator. That's what goes up in their visor, in their car or their truck, or that's what goes up in their office. Right. So I want to make sure it's about them. Um, thank you notes. I don't really have to go into this too much, but just please don't forget to send thank you notes and not just to your direct couples, but to anyone else that you're meeting, whether it's a venue, um, for wedding industry people, um, anyone that you're in contact with that you can share a little love to. Handwritten note goes a long way. It really does. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's not so popular anymore. And I wish it was. And the last thing is thoughtful gifts. So gift your services or prints with gratitude. Okay. So, um, one thing I love doing is sending a bundle of prints. I, I do this review for prints. So anytime someone sends in a review through the knot or a Google review for me, I will send them a surprise gift set of prints, which is honestly like three to five pictures. Um, but they're so grateful for that. And once again, it's more images and more products for them to share. Um, and then I have more stuff to talk about too. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right. So let's roll into exposure and promotion and how so many of us are doing it wrong. Okay. So I can be a very passionate person. So if I ruffle some feathers, sorry. Okay. But let's get into exposure and the do's and don'ts of now that you are meeting these people. Okay. So now we're kind of like, we're on this train, right? So you're being brave. You're meeting people. You're hosting events. You're thanking them. You're showing gratitude. Now people are going to be like, oh, can you do this for me? Oh, can you do that? Right? Like, like you know, they want, they want stuff for free. They, they want to maybe use and abuse your services. Well, let's chat about that. Okay. So let's talk about how, like, we can maximize that and the do's and don'ts. So first of all, let's talk about the do's. I highly encourage you to stay in alignment with your brand. So if, Basically, don't go out of your bubble too far for what you have to offer for free, okay? So when you're first starting out, you it is the name of the game. You do kind of have to do a little bit of everything, but don't stretch yourself so thin that you don't enjoy it, okay? I encourage you to reach outside of your industry. So since moving here to Arizona, I have really latched onto an awesome group of girls there in the fitness industry, which... I'm not a fitness person. Like I'm trying to be more healthy, but that's just, I don't live and breathe fitness <laughs> and nutrition. I wish I did. Um, but oh man, these girls are so awesome and they're all about mindset and really creating space for positive vibes and really off. Awesome. They're just really awesome. And so I've been reaching out into really these really fine cross promotions. And so that's definitely something I encourage you to do is reaching out to new people. Now, this is a kicker, which is, kind of a don't, <laughs> but do treat your offerings like a paying client. So this is one thing that it kind of leads into the don'ts. Um, and it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. And I'm sure this has happened to you before in the past, or maybe you've experienced it or with your services, you've, you've, you're guilty of this. 
And that is when you are doing a free event, like you're exchanging your services, you're doing a trade and you, you just kind of drop the ball and you just think, Oh, well, they didn't pay me when I get to it. I'll, I'll finish it. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm, that's not top priority. If she would have paid me, I would have been done by now. Right. This is where people make the biggest mistakes because people are watching. Okay. Let's say you go to an event and you are providing your services and it takes you three or four weeks to do it. Right. Or let's say you, maybe you're a baker or something and you are, you know, going to an event and you're not even sure you're showing up empty handed and you're like, Oh, look at my Instagram. Those taste good. Like, you know, like you want to be able to, you want to be able to share your gifts. Okay. So people are watching and if it takes you that long, it, it's kind of like you're, you're out of mind, like you're, you're out of mind, you're out of sight and it doesn't reflect positively on your business. Okay. So I only have one useless exposure. <laughs> don't. Okay. This is the most important. Don't. Are you ready for it? When you only rely on the influencer or the client to promote your business. Okay. This is the biggest mistake that I see creatives make is when they do go out on a limb and they, out of the kindness of the heart of their heart, offer their services. And then they just feel so used and abused because they didn't, they weren't tagged properly or whatever you kind of had in your head for the exchange that would, you know, benefit your time and make your time worth it. Like it just, it just goes undone. So my challenge to you is that when you do accept these things, just make sure that you are in a financial spot, that you aren't putting yourself out, like, you know, you aren't taking time away from your family, time away from your plants to do this. Um, but you are make it, it does, it doesn't make sense for you. Right. So you should be blogging about it. You should be posting about it. You should be sending thank you cards to the people involved. You should be going above and beyond and blow this up. Like it was, oh my gosh, like it was everything. Okay. It's so, so important to not leave it up into the influencers hands to promote you. That's not their job. They got what they wanted. You need to maximize that exposure and need to write on your wake. Right. So like we're boaters, you know, like that wave, like that big wave in the back of the boat, that's on you. And that's all propelling from below. So you have to really crank it and make sure it goes farther than it's meant to be. All right. So let's roll into one last story, guys. Okay. We're almost done. I can go on and on forever. Um, so now that you, once again, it's full circle. So now that you're being brave, you're getting out there, you're meeting people, you're doing everything right, breaking those barriers, popping those bubbles of those networks and meeting new people. I want to share you share with you a perfect example of when I, I just kind of put myself out there and I thought, you know what, why not? So I just recently moved here to Arizona and Shamisha, if you want to pop me back into um, my face, I don't know if that works. If not, it's fine. Um, so a friend of mine popped in and she said, Hey, Key, I, I have a ticket to the Phoenix fashion show and I want you to go. And I'm like, mm, that's not really my scene, you know, <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> I'll, you know, sure. And then I thought about it and I thought, why not? Like, maybe I can bring my camera. So I asked her, I said, Hey, is it cool if I bring my camera? And she said, well, I have no budget for it. You know? And I said, well, I'm not asking to get paid for this. But, you know, can I bring my camera? I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I don't want to, you know, if there's a photographer already commissioned, I don't want to, you know, get in the way. And uh, she's like, no, actually, that'd be awesome. Can you please bring your camera, capture some behind the scenes for social media? That would be amazing. So I did. And guess who was there? <laughs> so this was, a, this was last year at the Phoenix. It was like the Scottsdale big fashion show, like fashion week. Like it was kind of a big thing. And so um Nelly was there and he was the MC for the event and after the fashion show he put on this huge huge concert like he sang over 10 songs it was so fun I only know like two of the songs but I screamed them they were so fun and at the end um so at that night I rushed home I got the images up shared the gallery so early that next morning they like the um the fashion people had access to it um, and 
I got a text. I was at the, I was at a, a spring training <laughs> and a spring training game. And I, you know, I put my beer down and I'm like, oh my gosh, Nellie's um, manager is having trouble accessing the photos. And so I didn't get them to her and it was insane. So literally that evening, this happened. Nellie posted not one, but two of my images, tagged me properly. And this is what happened. I went viral in, in my little like network. Okay. Like just my people, like my Trader Joe's family, my family back at home, old high school friends were reaching out past brides and, you know, grooms were like, that's my photographer. She's awesome. Now I'm sharing this with you because this is literally what's all encompassing about walking out your front door, sharing your gifts and helping to create impact. You're solving a problem. You're helping others. I didn't get paid for this event. I'm not even a fashion photographer. Like I, I like natural light outdoor stuff. I am not a fan of this flash photography fashion stuff, right? Like, but what this did is it boosted my confidence. It made the people that I love around me support me and so proud of me. I mean, it was the coolest thing ever. And so I just wanted to kind of share that story quickly to remind you that you have the power to make your own magic. You absolutely have the power. You have the tools. You have the experience. Just get out and do it and share it with the world. So, all right, guys, I'm Kiana. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'm a destination wedding and boudoir photographer. Um, I love to dance. I love to meet new people and really just inspire you to turn your passion into your profession. I want to leave you with three key tips today. Okay. So if you, if all that was kind of a blur and you're thinking I'm an introvert, this isn't my style. I get it. Um, I want to encourage you to number one, get outside, be brave, enjoy some fresh air. If not anything, just boost your creativity and just be prepared that usually the moments that you think, I don't want to, I kind of want to stay home are the moments that you go out and your life changes before your eyes. Like it really does. Like it doesn't, you'll meet someone. Number two, stay connected, share gratitude and stay top of mind with past clients because oh, the past clients and the ones that you have worked up with, they adore you, they love you and they want to feel that connection with you and they'll support you for generations. And the third one, like I've mentioned a lot, um, <laughs> I really believe in magic. Um, make your own magic, gather friends and give them reasons to celebrate and to post online. That's what this whole thing is about. Create experiences, create fun memories that make people want to pull out their phone and share about it. Okay. So I encourage you. I am like the big sister in this creative industry. I will tell you like it is, but for the most part, I just want to see you succeed. Succeed. And I just want to thank Charlotte for creating this platform that we can all succeed and we can all really chase our dreams. Awesome. Um, that was so that's good. It. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You gave so many ideas. I'm like, okay, let's start party planning. Let's start getting these people over here. That was so awesome. And I always love your Valentine's party. That was awesome. Um, okay, so I have a couple questions for you if you're Thank ready. You. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you talk about getting outside. Um, for this is more for like our introvert people. How do you get outside when you want to stay home so much? Is it something where like you have an accountability partner or kind of how do you, and I know we're probably both extroverted. So, um, but from an introvert, how do they get outside? Cause that's probably the hardest thing is taking that first step out the door. Yeah. I, I love this. So I suggest if you are feeling so introverted and you're thinking this is painful for me to go outside, right? Why don't you find some more introverts? <laughs> like, seriously, I'm not even kidding. Find your people and go find a corner in a coffee shop. Okay. Go um, on a hike, get outside and do things, but do it. I think maybe it's kind of, like, sometimes when I say things, it feels like creative writing where you have too many options and then you just feel paralyzed. Mm -hmm. So I suggest starting small and doing things that you enjoy. If you're an introvert and you love reading your book on the beach or going for a long bike ride, mm -hmm. you need to do that. And the reason why I say that is because when you're at the coffee shop and you have to go pay for your coffee, 
that's when you're going to meet someone, right? When you're in line waiting for something and a conversation gets popped up, those tiny little, um, like tiny little interactions, that's, that's where the magic happens. So definitely you don't have to go out and like, you know, go meet new friends and go to raves and go to parties and like really put yourself out of that comfort zone, but start small. That's what Justin. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I have another question for you. With the events that you do, um, is this something like when you're, when you have a potential client, they've signed the contract and everything, is this something where you kind of let them know this is stuff that you do? Um, do you let them know beforehand or is it something that just kind of comes after that you send an invite out later on that you don't really tell them about? Does that make sense? I hope that question makes sense. Yes, absolutely. So I, I don't put it in the contract that they have a couple's date night that, that that's included in their price. I don't I include that they have a brunch and bubbly that they are included in their thing. Um, I rely on social media and, um, to kind of create that hype. And the reason why I don't include that in my contract or I don't make it a part of the collection um, is a perfect example like this year, right? Like with the pandemic, I, I can't control these things. Um, it's out of my control. So I, it would be nerve wracking for me to include that. So these are just bonuses. These, these are just fun surprises that get to, um, what is that called? Like, you know, over deliver, <laughs> like their expectations. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Last question. Um, you talked about staying in alignment with your brand. Um, how, when you're, you also talked about reaching out to other industries. So how do you stay in alignment? Like you're a wedding photographer, but now you're reaching out to fitness. So how do you stay in alignment with your brand when you're reaching out to those other industries that aren't necessarily a part of like your wedding photography? Great question. So, okay, that, you're right. That does kind of like cancel it out. <laughs> so, oh, so if, you, if you are staying in alignment with your brand, mm -hmm. you yeah. Um, if you are staying in alignment with your, your brand, yes, like definitely um, run in the circle with the wedding vendors and other wedding photographers and venues um, and offer your services to them. But I challenge you, like I, I'm kind of going, a kind of a hypocrite statement here. Um, I challenge you to offer your services outside of that bubble where you are putting yourself in the same demographics or maybe that's not the word like you're like the same um, target audience as the people that you potentially could book so for example um here in gilbert a friend of mine she just opened up a shake shop um it's so cute it's called revive i'm like totally shouting her out right now and um I latched onto her. And so she hosts little mini events. They do yoga events and they do things where I've, I just, I just offered my services and I said, Hey, whatever you need, I'd love to photograph this for you because of that event. I've literally photographed three different things, an engagement session from that. Um, another friend of mine, I just recently met, I photographed her um, nursing graduation photos. So what I mean by like staying within your brand, but then also reaching out is that you need to, when you are reaching out, if you are breaking away from that alignment, I highly encourage you to just go do things that you love that bring you joy because I would have gone to that yoga event anyway. I wouldn't be putting myself out to like, like I would have been enjoying it anyway. It would have been torture for me to be there and a waste of my time. I'm aligning myself with things that I love. Therefore, I think my future clients are going to love and we're all going to be a magnet to those same things. If that kind of makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. So you're enjoying these events, but also bringing into it what you love and your passion. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So that's like yes, pretty yes. much all of the questions. Guys, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to Kiana on Instagram. Um, you'll see her web link um, come through your email. You can also reach out via that way. Um, but once again, we recorded everything. So if you missed anything, feel free to come back to this link and you can get all of the information that you need. But Kiana, thanks so much. You offered so much um, information. You answered the questions really well. You um, cleared up a lot of things, but that, that was awesome today. So thank you. And thank guys, thank you. Yes, I appreciate bye. you guys. And we will see everybody next time for our next webinar.